Welcome to my channel American News Hub. Subscribe to my channel for news updates all around the world. In 2019, Huawei was thrust into crisis when the US government blacklisted the company, sending shockwaves through the global tech industry and igniting a storm of uncertainty for the Chinese tech giant. This move abruptly cut off Huawei's access to Google mobile services, a critical blow for its international smartphone business. Suddenly, Huawei phones outside China lost the Play Store, Gmail, Maps and YouTube, making them far less appealing to global consumers who relied on these essential apps for daily life and work. The ban halted Huawei's meteoric rise toward becoming the world's top smartphone vendor, causing international sales to plummet almost overnight. The company faced a dual crisis, its hardware supply chain was broken, and its software ecosystem was suddenly crippled, leaving both engineers and executives scrambling for solutions. In 2020, the US tightened restrictions even further, blocking Huawei from sourcing advanced semiconductors, threatening the production of its flagship devices, and putting its technological edge at risk. Revenue and market share nosedived through 2021 and 2022, as the company's consumer business was starved of critical components and struggled to maintain its global presence. U.S. officials painted Huawei as a national security threat, citing alleged ties to the Chinese government, claims Huawei strongly denied, insisting it operated independently. The sanctions were justified as protecting global security, but for Huawei, it was an existential challenge that threatened its very survival. Forced to rethink its entire strategy, Huawei had to innovate and survive while being unplugged from the global tech supply chain, pushing its teams to the brink of their creativity. The company was cornered, with no choice but to engineer its own escape and chart a new path forward. It was a fight for survival on multiple fronts, testing the resilience and determination of everyone at Huawei. The world watched as Huawei scrambled to adapt, with every move scrutinized by media, analysts and competitors alike. The stage was set for a dramatic comeback, as Huawei prepared to defy the odds and fight for its future in the global tech arena. Against all odds, Huawei staged a stunning comeback in late 2023 with the Mate 60 series, a phone powered by a domestically produced processor. This breakthrough defied US chip sanctions and ignited a surge of national pride sending sales soaring in China. By 2024 Huawei's revenue hit 860 billion yuan, a 22% jump marking its second highest ever. The smartphone business, once left for dead grew by 50% year on year. Huawei reclaimed its spot as China's hash 2 smartphone brand, overtaking Apple. Each new launch, including the Mate 70, drew huge demand, cementing its market position. At the 2025 Mobile World Congress, Huawei's confident return signaled the end of its crisis era. The company had not only survived US sanctions, it emerged stronger, more independent, and ready to challenge the global order. The comeback was complete, but the story was far from over. At the heart of Huawei's revival is Harmony OS, a bold move to break free from Android and Google. Early versions were Android-based, but Harmony OS Next is a true ground-up operating system with its own kernel and no Android code. This is China's most serious attempt to create a third major mobile OS, rivaling Android and iOS. The Mate 70 was the first flagship to run exclusively on Harmony OS Next, marking a new era. Harmony OS is designed as a distributed OS, powering not just phones but watches, tablets, TVs, cars, and IoT devices. The vision, seamless interconnectivity across all smart products in Huawei's ecosystem. The biggest challenge, building a robust app ecosystem from scratch. Huawei poured resources into developer support, knowing that without popular apps, even the best OS would struggle. Harmony OS Next is more than a technical feat, it's a strategic leap toward China's tech sovereignty. The real test for Harmony OS is apps. Huawei launched an aggressive campaign to fill its app gallery, persuading China's tech giants, Alibaba, Tencent, JD.com, to build native Harmony OS apps. By late 2024, native apps soared from just 100 to 15,000 thanks to financial incentives and technical support. This national effort framed Harmony OS as a symbol of technological self-sufficiency. The goal makes switching from Android seamless for Chinese users. Internationally, the challenge is tougher. Global developers have less incentive to support a third ecosystem. 
but as Harmony OS user numbers climb, the gravitational pull grows, making it harder for international developers to ignore. Huawei's app push is turning Harmony OS into a viable Android alternative, at least in China. While building Harmony OS for China, Huawei quietly searched for a workaround to help global users regain access to essential Google apps. The company knew that outside China, the lack of Google services was a deal-breaker for many customers. In early 2025, Google Apps became fully functional on new Huawei phones outside China. Not through official channels but via clever third-party tools like Gbox and Gspace. These apps acted as a bridge, letting users install and run Google services with surprising ease. These tools create a virtualized environment, restoring the familiar Google experience for international customers. Suddenly, features like Google Maps, Gmail, and YouTube were back on Huawei devices just as users remembered. Retailers in Southeast Asia quickly adopted this workaround pre-installing the tools and advertising Google Apps working on Huawei devices. This move made Huawei phones far more attractive to shoppers who rely on Google's ecosystem. For consumers, the experience is now nearly indistinguishable from official GMS phones. Most apps work seamlessly, and the difference is barely noticeable in daily use. This clever fix neutralized the biggest drawback of Huawei phones abroad, boosting their appeal and giving customers more choice in the smartphone market. In China, Huawei focuses on a pure Harmony OS ecosystem. Internationally, it leverages these workarounds to compete head-to-head -head with Android rivals, adapting to each market's needs. The dual strategy is pragmatic and effective, helping Huawei reclaim lost global market share and rebuild its reputation among international users it's not an official solution, but it works, and that's what matters to most users. For many, convenience and access outweigh technicalities. Huawei is back in the global game, proving its resilience and adaptability in a rapidly changing tech landscape. The US sanctions on Huawei are part of a broader strategy to curb China's tech rise, reflecting deep concerns about the shifting balance of global power in technology. Officially, the move was about national security, fears that Huawei's equipment could enable Chinese government surveillance and potentially compromise critical infrastructure in the US and allied countries. This narrative, though denied by Huawei, convinced US allies to exclude Huawei from 5G networks, reshaping the global telecom landscape and sparking debates about trust in international supply chains. The policy has bipartisan support in Washington, with both parties viewing China as a strategic competitor and agreeing that tech leadership is vital for national security and economic prosperity. In 2024, the nomination of China hawk Marco Rubio as Secretary of State signaled continued hardline policies, reinforcing the message that the U.S. stance on China is unlikely to soften anytime soon. Beyond security, the conflict is about economic dominance, targeting China's Made in China 2025 ambitions in AI, robotics, and semiconductors, as both nations race to control the technologies of the future. By hitting Huawei, the U.S. aimed to slow China's progress and protect American tech leadership, hoping to maintain an edge in innovation and global influence. The sanctions are just one front in a larger tech war between the world's two biggest economies, with ripple effects felt across global markets and industries. For Huawei, this means operating under constant pressure, making technological independence a national priority and driving massive investment in homegrown innovation. The stakes are higher than ever, as the outcome of this tech rivalry could shape the future of global power and influence for decades to come. Huawei's resilience isn't just about smartphones, it's about diversification. Its core business in telecom infrastructure remains strong, providing steady income even as phones were banned. Cloud computing is a major growth area, with Huawei Cloud challenging Alibaba and Tencent in China and expanding globally. The company is also developing its own AI chips, reducing reliance on foreign tech. In autos, Huawei supplies smart car tech, Harmony OS-powered cockpits, sensors, and autonomous systems to major Chinese automakers. This Huawei Inside model lets it tap the EV boom without building its own cars. By building strong positions in ICT, cloud, AI, and automotive, Huawei has become a balanced, resilient tech conglomerate. Diversification is its insurance policy for the future. Huawei's forced self-sufficiency is reshaping the global tech landscape. 
For decades, U.S. companies like Google and Apple dominated with globalized platforms. Harmonios next challenges this, proving a competitive ecosystem can exist outside Silicon Valley's orbit. The rise of Harmony OS could fragment the mobile OS market, forcing developers to support three platforms and deepening digital divides. The Splinternet is becoming real, different regions, different apps, different rules. US sanctions, meant to cripple Huawei, have instead accelerated China's domestic chip industry, narrowing the gap with global leaders. The result? More competition, more geopolitical friction, and a less predictable tech future. Huawei is now a symbol of technological sovereignty, battle-hardened and de-risked. Its journey offers a playbook for other non-Western firms navigating a world of rising tech nationalism. The global tech order is being rewritten, and Huawei is at the center. Huawei's future hinges on two battles, cementing Harmony OS as the third major mobile OS and regaining global market share. Success depends on expanding its app ecosystem and delivering a seamless user experience for hundreds of millions in China. Internationally, unofficial Google app workarounds help, but the company must tread carefully to avoid further US backlash. Huawei will focus on regions where its brand is strong, Southeast Asia, the Middle East, Latin America, while a US or Western Europe comeback remains unlikely. The tech war shows no signs of easing. Further sanctions could target AI or automotive tech. Huawei's diversification into cloud, enterprise, and smart cars is its hedge against future shocks. The company's progress in domestic chip making will be a key test of its long-term independence. For Huawei, the fight for survival is over. The battle for the future has just begun.